here on One Bills Live on a Monday. Chris Brown, Steve Tasker with you, and happy to be joined now by Bills radio color analyst and former Bills center, Eric Wood. Long time no talk, Eric. Are you uh, hitting them straight and, you know, picking picking the right horses? What's going on? Yeah, I've, I've been hitting it a lot, not always straight on the golf course, and I did not have the Belmont winner. I don't think many people did. That, that uh, I can't even remember the name of the horse that won. Archangelo, it. I think. It Archangelo, was. that's right. Um, but anyways, no life. Life is good. Enjoying the summer and uh, enjoy some time off before we hit the ground running. Come early August. Well, you're a good one to ask. I'm glad you're having on. We have you on because we are, we got this question about you know which which group is going to take a bigger step forward this year: the offensive line of the Bills or the defensive line of the Bills. And you go back and look at what they did last year. Statistically, the offensive line was significantly ranked higher than the defensive line. Now, granted, the defense as a whole was ranked much even higher than the offense, but they were both top three, top five units. It's hard to get away from how good both sides of the ball played. What are your, What is your take on the changes that have been made on both sides up front for the Bills? Yeah, I think there's the opportunity to have upgrades on both sides of the ball with, with the investments that have been made, whether that's through the draft or through free agency. Connor McGovern comes over from Dallas, one of the biggest signings in free agency. And then they've continued to add guys like David Andrews, uh, Brandon Shell on the offensive line. And then, of course, they draft Osiris Torrance in the second round out of uh, Florida. So there, there's going to be a lot of competition, I feel like, uh, on that offensive line to see who's going to really play those two guard spots. We assume Spencer Brown will be back at right tackle, but he could have some competition as well there. Deion Dawkins, Mitch Morris, they'll be set in place at left tackle and center. And then McGovern, we assume he'll be playing left guard. But on that right side, there's going to be some competition, um, and, and that'll bring out hopefully bring out the best in that unit. You know, Josh Allen's talked about how he's looking to improve his eyes, which maybe gets the ball out of his hands a little bit quicker, makes better decisions. Uh, you know, I would assume with some of the investment at running back that that they run the ball at maybe a, a touch more this year. Um, but all that being said, um, you know, the offensive line had, had a solid year last year and, and really has the opportunity to upgrade uh, with some of the guys that have come in this year. And then, uh, along the defensive line, I think part of it depends on when Von Miller's back, and I understand he got some good news as of late, but you know, if, if he's starting off the season uh, healthy and, and ready to roll and you add a Leonard Floyd on the outside, you know, I think the pass rush could be improved there. And then on the inside, it seems like they got a little bit bigger. You bring in a Puna Ford, maybe that you know, combined with Daquan Jones, at times you put both of them out there. Okay, now it becomes a lot tougher to run uh, on on the interior of the Bills' defense. And, you know, it, it, time will tell, and I don't even know how much of it we'll get to see in the preseason, what these new changes with the Bills' defense, with Sean McDermott calling the plays this year. But I, I think that defensive line, if you had to if, – if you put me up to the question of which – could make the bigger jump I would say the Bills defensive line and you know I just feel like this year one of the things we got to see is is a four-man pass rush so not blitzing creating just uh pressure on the quarterback with the four-man rush and I think those additions could help with that yeah and I I did want to get your take on Puna Ford specifically Eric because it's a guy that's built so low to the ground but he has I don't want to say unusually long, but longer arms than you would expect from such a squatty player. So maybe just talk about the combination of him being so low to the ground, you can't get under his chest plate if you're over six foot. And then his arms are reaching you sooner than you expect because they're longer than most short guys. So what kind of problems does that present for a guy like yourself playing on the other side? Yeah, that's a that's a nightmare for a center, especially a taller center. I played at six foot four and those guys that were shorter, you know, I think back to maybe a Vince Wilfork and, and I'm not saying he's short, but he was maybe six one. And those guys that are lower to the ground at times, they're harder to move. And then, you know, you got to be a certain amount of height to be able to carry 300 and something pounds. And, you know, so it's kind of that five eleven to six one. Those guys were really tough to move because they're so low to the ground that does give you an advantage and then there's a reason that the nfl prioritizes arm length because especially on the line of scrimmage 
it makes a big difference. When you can get your hands on someone and keep someone at length, it gives you the advantage. So I, I truly loved that pickup when the Bills uh, were able to – to kind of take him in that second wave of free agency. I thought that was a very solid pickup. And, you know, when you can have two steady run stuffers like a Daquan Jones, and then you add a Ford like they did, that can give you some flexibility in personnel that you can use to an advantage. And one of the things about this defense has been, it's been so solid under Leslie Frazier. They've been really tough to move the football on, all of that stuff. But the one thing when you look at them, they're just unspectacular. When right. you need a play, sometimes they're they just they're they're solid. Then the play goes off, and if the if the offense makes a play, okay. But they just don't get they don't create a lot of sacks. They don't create a lot of havoc, and they don't get a lot of turnovers. What's it take for a team to have that as their personality? Obviously, the numbers. But what different about a team that is able to do that, and a team that doesn't get it done? Particularly one that's been as talented as the Bills have been. I think a lot of it starts with the penetration of the defensive line. You know, when you can put pressure on a quarterback quickly, that is forcing him to make mistakes on the back end when he's throwing it. You know, that's where your sack fumbles, the strip sacks, interceptions. A lot of that's coming from the penetration of the defensive line. And oftentimes it takes two. It, you know, we talk about it pretty often throughout the broadcast. We've talked about it on One Bills Live before, but just one player on the defensive line winning his pass rush rep, that doesn't necessarily equate to a sack very often. It generally takes two because the quarterback can can avoid one. It's when there's multiple pressures. And so I don't know that the Bills will instantly become this blitzing machine under Sean McDermott because even with uh, when you look back to his time in Carolina as defensive coordinator, they weren't a huge blitzing team. But I, I I do think you're going to see a lot of penetration from this defensive line, and that comes from the personnel that they have. They extend Ed Oliver, you know, a healthy Ed Oliver, and some guys with some serious juice off the edge. That can be the deciding factor that's going to create turnovers. Yeah, and you mentioned Ed. That's why they really extended him, right? I mean, that guy is a penetrator, and while he doesn't get a lot of sacks, doesn't you know, isn't one of those guys. He does get into the backfield consistently even if he doesn't make the plays and that really helps the guys around him right is that you think that's the reason they extended ed yeah is, and you got you know yeah you have a guy that's young he's been in your system they obviously had the confidence of being around him on a day-to-day -day basis that he's going to continue to get better and yes I, I you know when you look at it those three techniques, they're they are not easy to find. You know, we can talk about how good Chris Jones is or the Fletcher Cox is and whoever it may be, but they're just not that easy to find. And, you know, Ed takes his lumps. When you're a top 10 pick, you know, a lot's expected of you, but he's been solid so far in his career in Buffalo. And he's kind of, you know, he's he's getting to that sweet spot of your career. I believe we've talked about it, Steve. I talked to a lot of guys about, you know, there's that sweet spot of your career where, your body's still really good, but your experience is caught up as well. And then at some point your body starts deteriorating, but your experience is so high that you can, you know, you're, you're going to continue to play, but there's that sweet spot. And, you know, now guys are so in tune with their bodies that that sweet spots lasting longer, but Ed's getting to that point now where he's still young enough, but the experience is there and, and he should start playing some really good football. Flipping it over to the offensive side, Eric, you know, you mentioned the investment in the guard position and you look at the power backs that they added as well in the form of Damian Harris and Latavius Murray. How much of that do you believe is like a like a unmistakable indication? We are going to try to run this ball better between the tackles because you got girthier, bigger guards that you've brought in. Uh, whether they all start or not is up for debate, obviously, in training camp battles, but girthier, bigger men to play your guard spots. And you've got bigger backs that have a have a proven track record in between the tackles. Yeah, I, I do think that they want to be able to run the football in between the tackles when needed, want to be more physical. So you bring in a, a Damian Harris, a Latavius Murray and you know, whether both those guys make the team, however it may be, it, it does seem that the Bills have made a, a push to be more physical. 
uh, in the run game. And look, when you have Josh Allen, when you have a top three quarterback in the NFL, you're not going to prioritize the run game as much. But Sean McDermott consistently says that you have to have an effective run game or you just make it way too easy on the opposing defensive coordinator. He's saying that from a defense, a former defensive coordinator's perspective. You make it way too easy on them when they just when they know you're throwing the ball over and over and you don't threaten them with the physicality of the run game. And, you know, that it, 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 with a salary cap and everything else, it's hard to be good at everything, but they've made the commitment this offseason to say, hey, it, it – it appears that they wanted to get more physical in the run game at the running back position and then in these uh, guard investments. Yeah, so when they do get you know bigger, maybe more athletic at guard, only lately have we seen them bring in some competition for Spencer Brown. I think to us, we've talked about it now. They brought in Shell uh, from the Miami Dolphins now late, but it really showed a lot of faith in both Deion Dawkins and Spencer Brown. Spencer was – had back surgery offseason last year. He was in a high ankle. He was he was nicked, and you know he's still out there. But I think the club, by the way they built this offensive line, really showed a lot of faith in those guys on the edges. Yeah, you're exactly right. And you know I've talked to Aaron Cromer about Spencer Brown, and he loves Spencer Brown, and that's a guy that is going to continue to get better. You mentioned, uh, I think the the biggest point on Spencer Brown is, especially for young offensive linemen, and and I, I say this from a, a point of experience with the injuries I had early in my career, when you don't have an offseason to, to get better and develop, you're kind of playing catch up once training camp gets going throughout the season. Yes, you're getting better, but you didn't have that full offseason of getting stronger, getting in the weight room, a guy that's long and lean like him. He needs that time. And so now he gets a full offseason to truly develop. And I think you could see a jump in his game and, and the Bills know it. And that's that's why they are comfortable with him out there on the edge. We've been talking about this on the show, Eric, and even on our podcast, Bills by the Numbers. I know I understand why all the attention has gone to the Aaron Rodgers acquisition by the Jets. I get it. It's the sexy new thing. It has transformed their offense because he is that good. Totally get it. But uh, amidst all that has happened in the offseason, the Bills roster, and I know I can speak for Steve because we've discussed this, the Bills roster right now is better than the one they had last year. They've made upgrades almost across the board, and nobody's talking about it. It's like I'm looking at Steve going, are we seeing something different than everybody else? The roster is deeper and it's more talented, right? Uh, I, I believe so. And and there's a reason that the Bills are still sitting in that top two or top three favorites to win the Super Bowl. But yes, they didn't. There was no splash in free agency like Von Miller last year. Last year, they bring in Von Miller in free agency. It's one of the biggest signings of free agency. And now all of a sudden, everyone's talking about, well, now that's what's going to get them over the hump. And, you know, last year in the postseason, they didn't have Von Miller. Well, he will be back this year. We'll see if he's back for the start of the regular season. But, man, I, I love the Bills roster. I love what they've done. The cohesion and the core are still in place. You bring back both those safeties on offense. You have Josh Allen. You have Deion Dawkins. You have so much cohesion with the core, and then you've just continued to add pieces year after year. And, yes, you're right. This is an extremely talented roster. But, you know, when you're talking about, you know, the national media perception, the lasting image is the Bills playing like junk against Cincinnati. And so now – they're kind of the forgotten team that didn't make a huge splash. And so, um, you know, I'll say this. I, I, I don't think Sean McDermott is mad about that, though. He's, he's, <laughs> he's secretly loving the fact that he can, he can use this as motivation, too, I'm sure. Yeah, and, and each, as you get to this season, we've, we've talked about the offensive line and defensive line, and, and it's different for evaluating both. Because on the offensive line, and I'm, I'm not saying anything that you don't know, a, a quarterback like Josh – he covers up a ton of problems. Um, you know, somebody whiffs on a block on a pass play. It's like, eh, no problem. He's, you know, he's around the end, throws it down. Oh, it's, it turns from a first down into a touchdown or vice versa. Uh, you know, two guys whiff. He makes something happen. It turns into a first down rather than a sack. So we, it's harder to evaluate how an offensive line does. What, in your mind, what is there a st- statistic or a group of statistics that you look at that makes it easier for, you know, just, you know, like a, like an old guy like me 
to evaluate an offensive line. What statistics do you look at or how do you do it when you're, you know, when you're, when you're evaluating somebody other than the bills, like, you know, you don't follow them week to week. Yeah, it's, it's truly hard to say. And that's a great question without turning on the tape and evaluating an offensive line, because numbers can be skewed by sacks or whatever it may be. I'll say this um, under Chan Gailey, we would track sacks and yards per carry. And that was kind of our like, hey, we want to be really low, like as an offensive line, kind of our two pride points were yards per carry and how many sacks. And one of those years was we were the lowest sacks in the NFL and second in the league in yards per carry, but we didn't make the playoffs. So who cares? And were we one of the best offensive line in the league? I would say we were one of the best. Were we the best? I'm not sure. You know, it, it's tough to say, but we also had Ryan Fitzpatrick, who was extremely smart. He gets rid of the ball fast and you know, he just doesn't take a lot of sacks. And so, you know, I don't know that that was even the best offensive line I played on in Buffalo. It's just so hard to say, uh, because if you have a, a pass happy team, your, your sack numbers are naturally going to be higher when you can commit to the run game. And in the fourth quarter, you've gotten over 30 carries and now you're starting to really wear on a defense that's going to skew the numbers as well. Eric, with all that, you know, Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott did to add to this roster and you know, the vast majority of the time they get the right people to bring in here to augment the roster. Was there a favorite transaction of yours? Like as soon as you saw it cross on your phone, you were like, Ooh, I really like that. Like, was there one that stands out for you, whether it's draft or free agency? I'll say on the draft, I liked Kincaid. And I know that's an easy one to say, um, in, you know, he's the first rounder, but I, I really like that pick. I think, it gives the Bills, I talked about um, personnel flexibility earlier with some of the moves made on defense. I think mm -hmm. offensively, now you have two tight ends that can put the defense in a bind. You know, you're putting in 12 personnel with two tight ends and a running back and two receivers. Okay, well, are you treating Kincaid like a wide receiver or are you treating him like a tight end? And so you're, you, can, you can do more to to kind of help Josh, help Ken Dorsey create some mismatches. I, I really like that one. Um, and, and I'll say just recently, the Leonard Floyd thing, yeah. you know, when they, when they nailed him late, you know, to me, when you can add a guy that, you know, year after year is getting that eight, nine, 10 sack mark, it's like picking up hockey players, like goal scorers score goals, guys that get sacks, they produce year in and year out. And so to get uh, Floyd signed this late and just to add another piece like that, that was probably the one that I'm driving in my car and the bills thing pops up on my phone. I'm like, Whoa, didn't see that one coming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Those are the kind of things too, that, uh, and it happened, it happens once in a while like that. You get a guy you don't know, but this guy in a down year last year, he probably would have led the bills in sacks. Um, right. And we've seen him out at practice in these voluntary OTAs, and he is a long, lean, bendy pass rusher. Um, you know, now we're talking about, you know, Eric, we didn't get into this in this uh, conversation, but now you're looking at maybe the Bills having too many guys to make the roster. I mean, you look down at the guys that that, that are there. It's Von Miller, Leonard Floyd, you got Greg Rousseau, Shane Ray, and then you've got A.J. Epineza, Greg um, Shaq Lawson, and Boogie Basham. Well, you're already two over what you're really going to need to play in a game. Then you've got all the other, you know, you've got the other guys that are there. Um, yeah, and you go look at your second rounders in Epinesa and Basham. Do they both make the team if you love what Shaq Lawson brings and the physicality at times that you need from him that you're not going to get from either of those guys? Okay, well, now is it – now are you going to part ways with one of your – second round draft picks that, you know, have right. produced at times, but the consistency has not been there for either of those guys. If one of the, if that happens, I would say, and you can, what do you think about this? I, I think it's going to happen last couple of weeks before the season, like before they do the roster cut down, like during, yeah, like right you protect before that yourself, last, you protect yourself against injury that way. Right. Right. After or right around that last preseason game, they'll either give them some reps and let them go out and turn them loose. And they'll get six sacks in the last preseason game. And then they'll get traded because, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, we could be seeing Bean, and, and that's on the offense. You know, the Bills have a lot of quality guys in their offensive line room too. Yeah, to where 
We've seen it from Bean since he's been the GM of the Bills. They stockpile those O linemen, and then towards the end of training camp, when someone's roster is getting dinged or someone's desperate for an O lineman, now you go snag a fifth, sixth, seventh round draft pick, which Bean's talked about at length. When when you're consistently good like the Bills are, those draft picks at the end of the draft become valuable because your roster's so good. It's hard to land guys as undrafted free agents because their agents assume they can't come in and make the team. And so right. you stockpile a couple more of those. Yeah. I mean, Daryl Johnson, I think I was a seventh round pick, but he has a big preseason. They're fat at the position and they trade him to Carolina. I mean, we've seen it before late in the game. And obviously you, you don't do that early in the game unless you know, you're presented with an offer. You just can't refuse. You kind of let training camp and preseason play play out. So in the event, maybe you have a couple of injuries, you're still okay before you start stripping the cupboard. So yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what plays out in training camp at the pass rushing position. Some of those old line spots that you mentioned, Eric, Um, I'm kind of, I don't know what it is. I'm just really pumped for camp battles. And this is like one of the strongest rosters we've ever seen them put together. It's going to be really interesting. You're going to be out there, right? Periodically at camp this summer. I'm going to try and make it up for training camp this year. I didn't make it last year. I'm going to try and make it up. I, I love going to Rochester. Got to go up for the uh, final of the PGA championship. Oh, not, yeah, that's got right. to spend I a little you. time up there. And so, um, yeah, the plan would be is to to try and get by training camp this year and, and pop my face in there. But I mean, I, I we talk about how deep this roster is. I mean, this is going to be another year where the bills could just be beating the brakes off of people in the preseason because, you know, your roster is just so deep. You got quality players everywhere. Yeah. Do you have, do you have a, or have you picked, I know it's really early. Have you picked a dark horse? It might be a guy that, because it used to be when I was coming up and I, it's not that way so much anymore. There's always one surprise cut in the camp and then one guy's surprise makes it. Uh, do you have any dark horses on this roster that you're looking at? You know, as far as someone to to make the team, you know, I, I'm not sure. I'd have to I'd have to break down the the position groups. It's and, a hard and group to make out man. the numbers. You know, it's hard, I, man. But when you look at, uh, like, let, let me talk about like someone I think we could be really impressed with in preseason games. Give me Khalil Shakir, second year in the offense. A lot of talent. He'll get a lot of time out there. You know, I'm sure we won't see Diggs a whole lot out there. Right. Probably not a whole lot from Gabe Davis. You you know what you're getting from them. I think you could see him put up some big boy numbers in the preseason. Yeah, that'll get everybody excited for sure. Eric, thanks for the time and enjoy what's left of your summer because we're going to blink and, you know, we'll be like, oh, look, Eric made it out to St. John Fisher. <laughs> Absolutely. You guys enjoy the summer as well. It was, it was fun catching up. Uh, look forward to doing it again soon.